A few weeks ago, I was having a conversation with two senior executives from a medium-sized software company. And it was during that discussion, and uh, it's quite interesting because I've been doing this for a number of years, as many of you probably know, um, but it's during those sort of discussions that you quite often see things from another perspective. And they were describing to me that the process that they'd gone through recently in contacting a number of mergers and acquisitions companies. And they'd found it quite frustrating from a number of uh, respects. But what became very evident to me was those particular executives, their lack of experience in, in selling a business before. I think one of them had been involved in a business that had been solved and had sort of been loosely connected to it with the sale. But uh, the other executive had never done it before. And, and that's fairly typical. Uh, quite often a senior executive in the software sector perhaps will have sold one business, maybe two at the very most. But that really doesn't give you that depth of expertise that you know. And quite commonly what we see is that the same mistakes are being repeated time and time again, even when perhaps they've done multiple acquisitions. The M&A world is not geared for the small and medium sized software company. And there's a number of reasons for that. Uh, one of which is small and medium sized companies are probably the most difficult to sell. And to uh, make that even worse, the, typically the, the management people uh, and the people that are involved in M&A process from M&A companies are typically from an accountancy, corporate accountancy or perhaps sometimes a legal background. So their key skills are more about the technicalities of that process. So they're involved in the due diligence, for instance, and a lot of the research work. But fundamentally, what you need to happen is you need to be able to maximise the value of your business. That's why at Boss Equity, you know, our marketing tagline is unlocking greater equity value. And that's what it's really about. It's about understanding that process in depth and understanding how you can maximise the value of your business. Because we're a great believer in the software entrepreneurs, um, what they do for the economy. Although a lot of the news tends to be about the very largest companies, when you look at the stats, it's very, very tough to create, a, you know, come up with an idea to actually start a business and grow a business, nurture that business and keep it safe. I think it's, it's something like 85% of businesses are, don't exist after 10 years. Uh, very few businesses reach beyond the three million mark even. So once you get to that stage, I think that it's only fair that the software executives, the entrepreneurs that have driven these businesses forward, they get their just rewards. And the typical M&A industry, the typical M&A broker out there are not really geared up for handling those type of businesses. What they tend to talk about are averages within the industry. But what you actually see when you analyse the statistics is that there's a vast variance in the figures that are achieved. Uh, I've said this many times, but please don't believe that businesses are sold on a multiple of either revenue or EBITDA. Not if you really want to maximise the revenue. I think that some people almost become programmed into thinking that, and that's a big mistake. And the other thing is, that they can also start to believe that there is a standard deal structure. And again, you know, I've, I've experienced, I've been, I've been involved with over 140 different deals in various uh, sectors. And I can say no two are alike. There are commonalities about the process and what needs to be achieved, but the actual structure, the uh, makeup of those businesses are very, very different. And as a consequence, the deals that need to be put together have to be very different. So what you really need is you need people who have had experience of going through this process many times and achieving maximum uh, valuation. You need an organisation that has a really good track record that once they engage, they complete. And that's something to be very careful about when you're looking at M&A companies. Some of the biggest M&A companies in the world have a very, very low success rate. They have a fantastic rate of engagement sometimes engaging with and taking on three to four new clients per week per region but their closure rate is very very low now we're a much a smaller organization and uh, i think that that will always be the case 
what we pride ourselves on is having the most experienced business, commercially aware business executives in the world, in each of the regions. So that means that we have had people that have worked in your industry, have owned and managed businesses just like yourself, have sat on the same side of the table as you have, and understand the issues of growing a business, and appreciate what it is to achieve what you have done. To lay on top of that, what we've got is what we call our Equity Value Accelerator Service. Comes in, there's four modules to that, and we take you through that process to maximise the value, to de-risk that process, and hence that's why we have a success rate of 94%. And I'll repeat that, because I'm very proud of that figure. 94% of the deals that we take on, we close. If you'd like to find out more on why we have such a high success rate and why we have so many happy clients where we've achieved maximum value, give us a call. We'll have an exploratory discovery meeting with you uh, and be happy to have a chat. Thank you very much.